So today we're in the uh, MTU, one of the MTU automation laboratories, uh, where we're going to look at putting together all what we've done in previous units and putting it together in a kind of semi-realistic setup that you might see in an industrial setting. What we're going to have here is a production process. Uh, that production process is going to have a PLC and a little um, conveyor belt. We're going to gather the data from that production process. We're going to route it through an IoT gateway with MQTT. And that's all going to be in the production level network. And we're going to pass that data up into a higher level network where that data can be used for analytics, it can be used for preventive maintenance, or it can just be there for visualization. And the, I suppose, key takeaway here is that the production network is going to be completely separate from the level three network. We're going to have one piece of equipment passing data up from the production network up to the level three network, um, and no other data flow between the two networks, very similar to what you would see in a real industrial process. So the piece of equipment we're going to use to simulate this production style network and this production style level two to level three data flow is we have this conveyor belt system that was provided by one of the remain partners, Festo. And this piece of equipment has a number of sensors on it. It has a number of relays on it. And ultimately it's a conveyor belt that will allow you to pass data down it or pass pucks down it or parts down it like a pattern as it does here or it will reject them if it, if it detects certain conditions. So this is, a, I suppose, a pseudo production process um, that we're going to use to demonstrate the data flow from a, from a production process up to our level three network. The sensors we have on this piece of equipment, we have a optical sensor here that detects when a puck's being put onto the conveyor belt. We have an inductive sensor here that detects if it's metal or not metal. If it's metal, it rejects a part. If it's not metal, it passes it through. And we have a solenoid that basically activates if it detects metal, it pushes this down to reroute the part into a reject line. And I suppose all these sensors and solenoids and actuators are being monitored by your PLC, which is sitting here. All that data is going back into the general inputs and being controlled by the outputs of the PLC and is being then aggregated and put into an MQTT payload that can be passed up into the higher level network. So the PLC itself is a Siemens S7-1200. Uh, these particular PLC, PLCs come with MQTT functionality baked into it. So when you're designing your uh, PLC programs, you have MQTT blocks, as we've seen in previous units, that you can drag, you can use, and you can configure to gather data from its inputs, uh, to aggregate it into a JSON uh, data packet, and to send that data packet off to a gateway or to an endpoint of your own choosing. Uh, in this case, still on the level two network, we have the PLC connected into a level two switch. This is just an unmanaged switch, and we're using that to connect various um, points on the network together. So this switch is connecting the IoT gateway here to the PLC. If you want to put a maintenance PC in there, you can stick it into the switch as well. Uh, it's configured to, again, a small scale pseudo level two network that we're using here for demonstration purposes. Here we have a Siemens gateway. This is an IoT gateway. It's an IoT 2000 that's produced by Siemens. This is running a level two MQTT broker that's communicating directly with the PLC, gathering that data on the level two network. In this case, the data is unsecured. We don't have it encrypted in any way, which would be a common enough setup within a level two network. This gateway is then bridging, it's set up a bridge, and we've seen how to set up bridges in some of our previous units, but it's set up a bridge and it's communicating via the Siemens Scalance router up into our level three process, which is sitting here on this laptop. This is a real level three process. It would probably be a server hosted somewhere within the organization, but in this case, just for demonstration purposes, we're using a laptop. The router here, this is kind of the gateway, I guess, between our level two and level three networks. The router itself is being configured into two virtual LANs. We have VLAN one, which consists of these four ports here, and this is our production level two network. This is connected back into our unmanaged switch, where it's plugged in directly into all the level two networking infrastructure and can eavesdrop or gather data, I suppose, from that level two infrastructure and based on certain rules we configure within the router itself, 
it can pass that data up into our second virtual LAN, which is here, and this port here, which is our level three network. The rules we can configure on the router itself are we can accept certain data packets, we can reject certain data packets, we can also drop certain data packets, and we can allow only certain IP addresses to communicate with each other. We can also determine, or we can also set the direction of data flow we want. So in this case, data from a production network is only going to travel one way through the router, and that's up into the higher level networks. No data flow is permitted back into a production network. This is again a common industry practice to protect your critical infrastructure from any malicious attacks of data commands coming backwards that might upset the process. It's less risky just to have data flowing out of the network to be monitored, analyzed in your third party uh, production software or third party software. So from this router, we're going into our level three infrastructure here. On this level three infrastructure, we have another MQTT broker set up. And as mentioned, on the IoT gateway, that broker is configured as a bridge. So it's bridging between the level two to the level three. It's only passing certain data packets from the level two network up to the level three network. The router has a set of rules enforcing what data packets can be set up. And within our level three network, then we can determine what we want to do with that data by plugging other applications into the broker that's running on the level three system. So you might have a historian you want to route your data to, you might have an application where you want to send your data to be analyzed, or you might have a reporting um, system that you just want your data to go to, to generate reports that you can send back down to your production guys with any critical information that you might want them to, to have, to share, um, or so. So that's our pseudo um, production process, going from level two, from PLCs, through our network switch, through our gateways, through our routers, all the way up to level three. In reality, if it was a real production network, you would have a lot more infrastructure on your level two. You wouldn't have a laptop as your level three, but this here is all for demonstration purposes, so we can show how all of the elements and building blocks we've used up to now can be configured into something that resembles a real world scenario.